Hello friends, I hope you can hear me, you can see me. Uh, welcome to my studio in Montreal and welcome to the demo. Uh, I'm really happy to see you there. I want to tell you what for now in the Italy we have a two great festivals. A festival in Monza, it's a great event, and the Fabriano. And I feel very sad what I couldn't be there in person, so it's hurt me. Uh, well, if uh, some of my friends there on the exhibition and see me now, hello guys, I'm happy what you can be there. And maybe next year I will join you if everything will be better. So uh, today uh, we will talk about the dynamic watercolor sketch. Uh, I will explain later what I mean, uh, but during all the uh, demo, feel free to ask me any questions. Just type it in the chat, I will see that and will answer. So I can talk and paint in the same moment. So I will try to be fast because we're talking about something dynamic and uh, that's why we start to paint uh, right now in two minutes. And the last thing what I want to tell you, uh, I want to introduce you a new set of my brushes. Uh, for me, it's a big honor. Uh, that's a collection exactly of the brushes what I'm using uh, every day and will use uh, today. It's available on my website. We just run that uh, today at the morning. So it's a very important uh, point for me and I couldn't share it with you. So let's go. Uh, this is the original photo, what we're gonna use today. I switch the camera and explain you the idea. Uh, first of all, uh, what I called a dynamic watercolor. That doesn't mean what everything will be moved, because we're still talking about the flat paper for sure. I mean uh, that it's very nice photo, but it's look very stable. It's like a static picture, and uh, except maybe the clouds. The clouds have some movement. And uh, today I want to talk uh, how to find a way, how to explain it fast and simple plus how to make the really dynamic feeling about that picture. And uh, for this, I want to introduce you the great artist tool, this. This is one of the main tools to create a nice composition from any photo. Uh, by the way, uh, that's why uh, we create a special course about the composition on my website, watercolorline.com, because if we just cut it uh, a little bit, it will be look much better. Uh, for example, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, I know it looks stressful. Uh, okay, a little bit more straight. Great. Hello, Delaware. Thank you for joining me. Okay, and I you see the. The, on the bottom it's a great shadow, but uh, I believe if I do it like that and maybe move the shadow a little bit on top, it will be better. So something maybe like this. Okay. Uh, you should know I'm not doing this uh, always uh, with a knife for sure. I I'm just want to show you and introduce you the way what I'm doing in my mind. So we cut it and for now, you see what I did? I create something like a triangle and compared to what it was before this picture, that cutting part for my feeling look much better. Just because of the composition, it's already look like a dynamic. Uh, we feel the wind here because of the clouds and direction of the light, everything. So that's what I'm going to use for uh, reference. Again, I'm not doing this always by my hands. I just make it in my mind, mostly. And we make the fast sketch. Hello, Florida. Welcome to join me. Hello, Italy! Ukraine, great! New York, we have a lot of people, that's perfect. 
And look, you know the, uh, the rules about the third part, how to make the grid there. So that's what I finally, what I did. I put this main tower uh, like a third part. And I believe it will be better for my composition. And because we're talking about the dynamic sketch, I don't want to make perfect sketch by pencil. So we make something very, very simple stuff there. You know, if I will be outside in Rio and see that church, for sure I couldn't, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to use a knife because I can uh, cut it just by my arms like that, by hands. And uh, if I will be outside in Rio, uh, I never make the perfect sketch by pencil. I always make some measuring of the space and nothing more. So approximately the same thing I'm doing now. Okay, uh, great question about the, uh, the glasses, what I have. Yeah, uh, I have some tone uh, on my glasses, but the explanation is very simple. For recording, I'm using the very cold light. And you know, everybody hate that light. So that's why I change my feeling of this light to something more uh, regular, warm light. That's the reason. Hello, Germany, Argentina, Australia. Oh, wow. It's a huge difference in time. So I'm really appreciate what you joined me today. So India, so that's the sketch, uh, what uh, we've done. We don't have to do more about this. And because we're talking about something dynamic as well, uh, I will start to paint it wet on wet. So I put the water on my paper everywhere and plus I want to show you how to control direction of the water then we paint in wet on wet. I have one small secret. Hi New Mexico! Portland, welcome. And as usual, I put the water on the front side and on the back side everywhere. And by the way, uh, if, if you know, or uh, if you saw my previously videos, you know I'm painting on the back side of the Sanders Waterford paper. It's a double side paper, but the texture uh, uh, I like more on the back. So I'm always painting on the back side. And because we're talking about the fast sketch I don't want to wait because normally then I put the water I wait in, wait in around 15 minutes before I start so this time it will be faster uh, we need a seven and five lines brush and well as well like a three lines brush I'll take the Solomini calligraphy, a pointy brush and red brush liner. So the full set, what I'm using every day, that's exactly what I need today too. And uh, let's go. We're starting from the clouds and I promised you how to, uh, to show how to stop my water because now it's like a huge lake and the water moving everywhere. For instance, if I want to paint the sky, I don't want to have the clouds on my church here. So that's why I use just a paper tower to stop 
my water to remove the water there and the water will stop so that's uh, exactly give me control about where is my water and pigments gonna move on my paper so for me it's important because now, now I know that's still wet on the back that means if I want to paint something here I have a time but it doesn't move there so that's protected the same I will do for the clouds a little bit I want to have a white there and use a dry brush that was the reason for the some part of the clouds I'm going to use the dry brush hi Honduras Hey, the UK. Thank you for joining me today. So I will start to create the contrast first. Uh, I'm going to use the sky like a negative space. Then I say I'm trying to create a triangle composition. I mean, not just to put the bigger subject here and make it just a sketch and triangle. Everything what I'm doing now, it works like that. So all my movement of my brushes works to create a really, really diagonal like this. Hello India. You know, it's a, one of the golden rules. We always painting from lights to shadow. That's why I'm started from the most lighter part of my future project. I see we have a uh, 155 people so it's a pleasure for me to to see you there thank you very much for your time and joining me And, uh, you know, I like the combination between the dry brush and soft washout together. It's make it look very soft and nice. To create uh, the triangle better, I switch to the calligraphy brush to make the shape of the sky around the cloud there more darker and more carefully hello australia it's a completely different time on your side so thank you Now I'm combining everything together. As you can see, everything is standing on the salt gradients and that's make clouds look like a clouds. Plus, uh, we make the washout too.
That's by the way the the secret of wash out with my brushes because the hair is strong. That's why it's easy to do. And we're softly going down. I'm still not touching the main subject, but we already have a shape of the main subject because of the negative space. Okay, a uh, question about my paper. This absolutely wet everywhere except the part where is uh, removed, the water was removed and on the back it's a huge lake. So that's why I have a time to connect all my pigments together. Hello Tasmania. So we're going down, uh, first I put some light there, uh, remember we decided to move the beautiful shadow uh, on, the, on the photo a little bit up, so that's the original photo, I keep it here so you can see a little bit what I'm doing, like that, okay, so the light on the ground, Because, you know, we, uh, we're we talking about the uh, fast travel sketch. Uh, I pretend what I'm traveling. Uh, that's why I use the my travel, travel set. I mean the palette. And I'm starting to paint my church here a little bit. I don't want to make it like a completely done for now, but I can do something. And the contrast point, what I'm starting to do right now, help me to understand the level of darkness for other parts around. Okay, I see the question. Yeah, I um, always keep the paper with a uh, something like a five degrees. So, so it's almost flat. It's very soft angle, five degrees only. So I'm use the gravity. The gravity is uh, our best friend for watercolor, for sure, because the water moving in the predictable direction. Okay, in my palette, yeah, I see the question about the colors. Uh, in my palette, uh, I have a set of the nine colors. But for this painting, I use for uh, sky three guys, cobalt blue, um, phthalo blue green shade, Daniel Smith for sure, and uh, indigo. Here uh, it was the Queen Acridon Sienna. And times to times I add just a little bit pure and violet and the phthalo green blue shade. 
So that's all the colors what I'm going to use for that. Nothing more. That's another one line which helped me to show the direction and diagonal. So we make that wall, you see, uh, it's blended itself and I like it because it's real special effect of watercolor. That's why I like the watercolor. So it's less predictable, it's moving itself and we're working together. So I do something and watercolor doing something, it's good relationship. To make better texture here on the ground because it's still wet and I can do this, I add something. And uh, thank you very much for your likes. We have a 55 likes. That's great. Thank you. So you see, I'm just drop the pigments and the pigments going to move again itself. So that's why I mean, we're working together. And I don't want to control it 100%. So I leave the big part of jar for water. Uh, sometimes the uh, nice special effects we can do only with the water. So I can take the clear water on my brush and just spray it a little bit. And that will be nice as well. So it's like entering to the painting. Thank you, David. Uh, yeah, I, I like that stuff because it's always look alive. But when you're doing this, uh, don't lost your attention. So we have to continue to watch what happens. Maybe something will be look good, maybe not. And you have to be ready to, to change it and control it. Okay, uh, this it's like a, a test for me. I'm trying to understand how wet my paper. Can I continue to, to do something here or I have to stop? We have uh, 220 people. That's so cool. Thank you. Thank you, friends. and wash out. We just add some lights there and still trying to show the direction. I'm starting to prepare my future trees on that side. Uh, for example, on my palette, I don't have a, a 
like a warm green color of something like a sub green for traveling i i have just one green this is a tall green blue shade but using the for instance queen acridon deep gold i can make the very warm like a sub green almost color so limited limitation of colors give me a chance to mix pigments always Uh, dear friends, thank you very much for your kind words. I'm really appreciated. Thank you So I'm stop on that because after this I'm planning to put another one layer uh, with a more darker color So for now, I'm just preparing the connection to my sky and make some lights for on the trees and later later we back to that Hello, Argentina. Hi, Greece. So let's say uh, we finish the light part here. Uh, it will be better if we wait a little bit more because the pigments still not stable. They move and maybe in the end it will be more interesting. But to save your time, I'm stop on that. Yeah, that's all good. I make it dry, but don't be wrong, I make it dry just a little bit, uh, so I'm just stop to move my pigments on the paper, and after that we I put the second layer. So for now my paper uh, kind of dry on top, but on the back side you see it's still a huge lake, so it's a lot of water everywhere. <laughs> uh, thank you for a question about the oil and watercolor. You know, I for now I can say I prefer watercolor and I can tell you why uh, because in the oil you are responsible for everything uh, and everything under your control it's look like you working alone but with watercolor you working together with water and that's relationship make your job more unpredictable and I can say more interesting so sometimes I have something on the paper which I didn't plan it to have it just happens and I like it so that's great combination for my feeling. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for question about why we have to connect everything together. Uh, you know, for my feeling, um, we always have a two subjects on the paper lights and shadow that's how we understand the world around us you know the light is extremely important turn of light you see zero so we see something because of the light and that's what i'm trying to explain the light but uh talking about the watercolor uh, the light is already here this is our paper that means uh honestly everything what I'm doing I'm trying to paint the shadows everywhere but I mean it's one big shadow you know uh, for instance this tower it's one part of the tower second part 
but I don't think what that's that important to make that difference. Uh, totally, we understand the direction of the light, and that's what I'm trying to explain. I can tell you more that trees and everything I will connect to my shadow too, so everything will be together. Yeah, uh, thank you for a question about the online courses. Yes, on the website Watercolor Online, uh, we have a courses, a lot of them, video courses. So you can you can watch uh, that and training. And you know the difference uh, on my courses, for instance, I'm always trying to uh, keep connection to my students uh, with my students. So if you took the courses uh, after you make your uh, painting, you always send it to me and we talk and you have my advice and for me it's very important to to keep the communication so that's why i did my best to create the the connection to the students so yes we have a courses and uh, you will see the link of all the courses uh, in chat Uh, thank you for the message. Uh, say hi to your son. I, I, I'm really happy what you joined to me and spent your time with me like that. It's, it's honor. And now we're starting to create some dark part here and exactly because of the darkness there and here we have again the good composition line so that's important to keep it in the right level of darkness By the way, uh, this brush, you know, it's it's very specific stuff because you can make the very tiny lines and the same moment you can make the big flat strikes, you will see it now. So it's easy to control. You see, I, I can make it like very tiny like this or flat like that. And it will be like perfect touching in one movement. Plus, I like the darkness uh, on the photo, what we have here. So we'll try to fill in that and add some dark strikes there as well. For sure, I will use the dry brush mostly for that because I like the texture of the wall. It's look like a old stuff. And you see, finally, we have a good feeling of the light, which coming just because we add some shadows there. Okay. Uh, you know, Alia Prima, uh, it's... Uh, uh, a lot of styles we can put... Uh, 
in the name of uh, Ale Prim. It doesn't mean what that's the style. It means uh, the painting made in one session. That means Ale Prim. And yeah, we can say that it's Ale Prim. But it's not about the style. It's just about the idea to finish it everything in the same moment than we start. You know, I like that idea because uh, I have some feeling about the place and I'm starting to explain that feeling. But if I continue to make my painting uh, on the next day, for example, I have a different mood. I couldn't enter to the same water another one time. So that's why I prefer to finish it everything in one moment. Thank you for 100 likes what you give me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And you know, I, I like the uh, Monday time. Uh, we make the demo uh, each second Monday and I feel good about that because uh, it's a pleasure to, to talk with you. Uh, yeah, good, good good sentence. No, you don't need a five hours. Uh, I, I can tell you the secret how to make it uh, that simple and fast. Uh, just remember, when you was a kid, uh, you can make uh, any complicated sketch or painting just in 10 minutes. It's always a question of the selection. We have a lot of things there, but you don't have to copy all of them. Uh, the selection is uh, is the key. Uh, right selection and you make your job very simple. Wrong selection in, and you're starting to create all the flowers there. But you know, this photo and that picture, it's not about the flowers. Uh, it's about something different. Uh, I have a good good mood there. I, I like it, how it's look like. That's what I'm trying to explain. And if I miss a lot of details, I don't care. It's not the point to be a copy machine, right? So selection is one of the biggest part of the artist's job. No, it's my regular speed. Yes, I'm a fast guy. Uh, you know, if you on the plein air, uh, I can tell you an uh, important idea. If you paint in from the real life, how much time you think you have uh, to make your painting? Uh, for my opinion, you have always around 15 minutes. Because, uh, okay, you can spend uh, 20 minutes, I don't know, for a sketch. That's okay. But then you start to paint. The light's moving. The sun is moving. The shadows is moving. Everything is moving. So you have a 15 minutes till the shadows will be look completely different. And from this moment, you're starting to paint from, from your mind, not from reality. But it doesn't make sense to do that because you are outside. So that's why, for my, uh, for my feeling, you have to be fast to do what you want to do. To be fast, it doesn't mean what you have to move your uh, brush faster. That means you have to make the right selection. And for my feeling, that's the key. Right selection and you know what to do. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, I'm not just uh, copy what I see. I, I change it. I'm transform it. I decide uh, what part is important, which part is just don't interesting for me. You know, for instance, if you paint in the cityscape, uh, you can destroy the few buildings there and nobody care. Because we always have uh, something very visible, very important and something almost like a part of the background. 
by the way uh, that's the idea uh, i'm thinking about this like a, everything is just a background for my main subject Um, okay, good question about the dynamic. You know, uh, it's more easy. Uh, that was the idea of uh, the demo today. It's more easy to take uh, some dynamic subject like a like a boat uh, or running people. That's easy to make it dynamic. If we are talking about the uh, this very very stable and static uh, subject, I'm trying to add a little bit more alive feeling of the wind feeling of the movement, feeling of the uh, some dynamic composition here. So if you uh, saw the demo from the uh, first uh, minutes, you saw how it was a big foot and we cut it just to focus in on something. And what I'm trying to do, it's look like we have a huge world around my frame. And you see just a part of that. And uh, I'm trying to explain in my painting, if you move your camera a little bit, you will see something from the right side, left side. So, and plus I'm do my best to make it look fresh. Like maybe Justin, we're doing that now, like in half an hour or something like that. Just a few seconds, you are outside. You see that picture in real, you like it. And you're trying to explain it fast, simple, and take the exactly the important for you parts. And you can ignore a lot of other things there. Yes, and yeah, good question about the, the brushes, you know, for sure, uh, the time what you need to, to make that painting, if you're starting to paint this with a, that brush, you, you really need like a five hours. But for instance, with this, you saw how the sky was made. It took like a five minutes because uh, you can make the big strikes and plus you can make it like a flat like this and make tiny small touch in the same moment so yeah the the brushes the tools it's very important plus the the as well like a techniques what we're going to use for that yes that's right Okay, yes, and I am really never used the black color. I have in my palette neutral tint right there, but I am almost never use it, just if I need uh, the dark color for the, for the wires or something. You know, honestly, we never have a just real black. We have a dark gray, dark green, dark red. And what I am doing, I am using the indigo. That is my uh, main guy here in the big pan. And I mix everything with the indigo. Indigo make it uh, colder, grayish, and darker. For instance, if I need the almost black, but okay, let's say dark gray, warm color, I mix indigo and add inside a little bit Queen Sienna. So because of that, I have a dark, warm black, so let's say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, nothing. Uh, s um, let's answer is very simple. I use the paper tower. I'm using that a lot. And then I prepare my mix. I always do that. And you see the, the brush is a kind of specific brush. I can show you. Look, uh, I'm just preparing my mix. 
and you see the brush is flat. So I can do that strike or this strike. And I couldn't change the shape of the brush because it's whole the shape itself. So we can make the big washing and tiny lines in the same moment. And it's easy to control. Plus I can do that to create the nice trees or something. By the way, uh, on, uh, on this uh, Thursday on YouTube, we run uh, the, another one course about the brushes for free. So you can watch that. And I will explain a lot of things about the basic ideas of the brushes. But in two weeks on the same channel, uh, it will be the video about my tools, my brushes, because we always have a lot of questions, uh, some of them very specific and I'm trying, I will try to explain what's the difference and how I'm using that. So don't miss it. Like for example, uh, talking about the brushes, look, I, I take the kind of light uh, indigo mix, you see the shape of the brush, and we're gonna make the windows uh, just one strike. You see, that's it. So it's, it's really easy to do. This is the uh, Sanders Waterford 300 grams rough paper. That's my main, main paper. I'm using this mostly, uh, always. Uh, I, as, I like the arches uh, as well, but okay, first of all, always I'm using the rough paper. Uh, just for the some very specific job, I switch to the cold press. I like the texture of the rough paper, so I'm doing my best to using that always. So what I need now, I need the more tiny brush. This is my travel brush. Uh, we just add some details here. And after that, with a tiny brush, we add a little bit more lines. Yes, all my brushes you can find uh, on my website, watercolorline.com. You see the link. So all that stuff, you see that's my name here. Uh, it's a solo mini calligraphy, for instance. All that brushes, it's a handmade, made special for me. And I'm absolutely sure in quality because you see I'm using the same tools every day. So I know everything what happens with my brushes. And it's very important to know you and like your tool. And by the way, I couldn't tell you about uh, what inside this. Uh, it's the goat, but it's special goat. It's not my secret. It's a handmade brush and the secret of the master, how he prepared the, the hair for this. That's why it's strong hair, not soft like other goat, goat brushes. But about this, I can tell it's a, a secret of this brush. It's two different hairs inside wolf, outside the goat. So wolf hold the shape, goat hold the water. And for me, it's a perfect combination. Yeah. Sure, indigo for the sky, it's right here. I'm always use indigo for uh, for any kind of mixing for us for the sky, except if we need to make something like a really blue sky, like a postcard. But yeah, absolutely. Indigo is a, a very nice color, but again, depends of the of the brand. If we're talking about the Daniel Smith, it's a little bit more grayish and perfect mixed color. Some different. Uh, brands make the different uh, indigo and it's for sure it's it's a difference again for instance if you mix the indigo from the daniel smith uh, with a, any kind of sienna you will have a nice brown color 
if you take the indigo from the Windsor and Newton on Schminke, it's more bluish. And if you mix it with the warm colors, you have a green in the end. Yes, uh, 425 grams paper, it's great for watercolor, absolutely. It holds water perfectly, it's a good choose. Um, I have to check uh, about the name of the building. Uh, it's the church, but I don't remember the country. I have to check, sorry. Uh, you know, then we post the, uh, the demo on the YouTube after we finish that. I will write down the name so you can back uh, later and check it. Hi, Norway, Israel, Armenia, welcome. Hello, India, silent. Tokyo, Japan. A lot of people from the different countries. That's so cool. We almost done, just a little bit more touching. That's exactly what I mean. So we have a for sure we have a more details there on on the on the photo, but uh, that's what I call dynamic. I feel something, and I'm pretty fast trying to explain that with all my feeling and moods about that, without perfectly copy uh, the subject. So it's more about the feeling. Yeah, uh, my paper is flat after I put the water exactly because the water on the front and on the back everywhere. And then I uh, starting to put the water in the end. Uh, I make the big pressure with my brush on the paper like this. So I'm trying to remove the air between the fibers and the air between the paper and the board. So everywhere. And because of that, uh, my paper keep the shape all the all the process. And it's pretty comfortable to paint on the flat paper, for sure. A few more touching with the dark trees. I need to keep it like a, a, a darkness area because that helped me to explain the, the point of the light. Yes, no, I'm not stretching the paper. Look at that. You see, uh, the paper is still here. It's not stretched. And you see, it's a lot of water there still. 
it's just flat because there is no air between the fibers inside the paper. It's just water and fibers. That's why it's flat. Hi Italy, uh, I want to say a congr congratulation uh, because you have uh, two great festivals in the same moment uh, for now in Monza and in Fabriano. Спасибо, Грузия. Hello, Greece. Hi Paris, and you see a few more touching there, uh, still continue to show the direction and that make the painting more alive as well. So it's a good stuff to touch it like that. And don't be wrong, it's look like a spontaneous, but it's 100% under control. So I believe we finished that, so it took less than one hour with all my comments. And I can say uh, I did exactly what I want this time. Good light, uh, very fresh painting. If I will be outside, uh, maybe it will be a little bit more simple, and but I believe it will take the, almost the same time. Okay, my uh, paper uh, uh, on the board, it's a PVC board. Uh, by the way, this board uh, made special for watercolor. For me, it was a very strange because uh, it's not exist on the market, the good quality boards to hold your paper. So this is a PVC, it's not heavy and perfectly for support and the size exactly cuts it for the half of the imperial size of the paper. Okay, uh, we're done. Uh, thank you very much for your time and what you joined me today. Um, thank you for your great questions. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk with you like that. Um, if you have more questions, feel free to send me the message using the website watercolonline.com. All the information you will find there. This demo uh, recorded, so it will be available on the YouTube uh, and you can find it later if you want to uh, repeat it. And the better quality of that video, because it's recorded from the, uh, my studio cameras, will be available on my site watercolonline.com, so you can find it with a better quality, with all the details, but unfortunately uh, without chat, sorry. Thank you again. Uh, do not forget to find uh, another one, a live stream demo in two weeks on the same channel. Uh, I don't know the time yet and the subject but definitely we will send the information uh, in advance. Thank you again uh, for all your support, for your time, for your warmth. Uh, it's important for me and I appreciate it. Stay healthy and see you next time. Bye-bye.